Hi there, listeners. Today we're brought to you by Yokao, the world's most prolific Muay Thai brand. That's right. We're so excited to be teamed up with Yokao to bring you the best Muay Thai gear. Honestly, mate, as a coach, it took me a long time to find pads that don't wear down after a few months, but my Yokaos are staying strong. It's the worst when you get kicked in the forearms with bad pads. Yeah, it is the worst, especially when you have to do it every day. If there's one thing you should never compromise on with martial arts, it's the gear that keeps you safe. A hundred percent, mate. And Yokao has the absolute best quality of training gear, gloves, shorts and clothes as well. Not only that, it's the best value for the quality of the equipment too. Also, Yokao are offering you 10% off any purchase by using code COMBATCASUALS10 at the checkout. That's COMBATCASUALS10 with no spaces. Get yourself some top quality Muay Thai gear and save some cash. Oh, so Ian, I am... Um... <laughs> <laughs> so I went to shit straight away, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I just placed another supplements order. <laughs> oh, what what did you get? Well, obviously I got it from Power Body Nutrition. First of all, oh yeah, I should have asked where you <laughs> got that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're not good at adverts. <laughs> no, let's try that again. What did you? Yeah. Where did you? I tried. It, I did it again. I did it again. <laughs> so yeah. Where let's, did you get that? Hang distance? on. Let's start again. Let's start again. Okay. <clears throat> right. Hey Ian, I am. Um, I just placed another supplement order. Today. Oh, nice! Where did you get it from? <laughs> I got it from Powerbody.co.uk. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> what, what did you, it what is. Did... <laughs> it's very good. Um, so, uh, what did I get? So, yeah. What did you get? I Tell got, me what you got. <laughs> I got some whey, obviously, um, mm-hmm. for me and for Lily. Uh, so, mm-hmm. one that we like. Uh, Powerbody. I say recently, like in the last year, picked up SciTech Nutrition. Nice. Uh, they have really tasty whey isolate. So, I got some whey. I got some all nutrition carbs because they're mm. so cheap, man. And I, I just mix them in with my aminos anyway. Um, nice. So you don't really taste them. Uh, I got some essential aminos also from Cytec because they do very tasty essentials. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else did I get? Oh, I got, oh, mate. So I don't know how you are with, with tablets and pills and stuff. I um, I can, I, got, uh, I, w- I, I could be difficult depending on their size. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's what she, that's what she said. <laughs> Um, so i love having powdered multivitamins and minerals okay it's changed my life so my favorite one is um it's called uh orange triad um mm. and it's by controlled labs and it's amazing it has everything everything it's called multivitamins and greens i think and it's every vitamin mineral and greens that you would ever need so dustin i mean this this sounds like quite an order if it would be great oh, it was a was big some... order in yeah, it it would be great if there was some form of discount that you could get on that. Let order, me that let me stop crazy. you right there. <laughs> let me stop you right there. You needn't you needn't me. worry. <laughs> <laughs> you needn't worry about me, Ian, because I used our Combat Casuals ten discount code and I saved ten percent on my whole order. Wow. Well, I t- yes. yeah. Well, wow. I didn't even well, I did know, but I didn't even know. <laughs> that, that, well, what a great discount that is. Not to gloat, but I ended up spending over two hundred pound on the order, so I saved over twenty quid, which wow. is significant. That yeah. is significant, you know. It like, is and that's and that and that's not just for you to use. No, that's for anyone <laughs> who would like to use it. Oh, Ian, we just gave up the game. People are going to know our code. Oh. they're going to know how to save ten percent at powerbody.co.uk. That's combat that's... casuals ten. <laughs> And that's for all our listeners too. That's, yes, that's, that's for crazy. everyone. So just go to powerbody.co.uk and type in combat casuals one zero at the checkout to save ten percent. Amazing. We're that's terrible it. at adverts. We yeah. are not good at adverts. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just get on with the episode? Yeah, let's just get on with it. Let's, let's get into that. it. Nice one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Combat Casuals podcast. If you're a fan of mixed martial arts and all things related, stick around. We'll be talking everything from past and future events to harnessing your inner chi and everything in between. We want to provide you with the opportunity to get involved in the ultimate fighting conversation. We've been friends for too long now. And we always have strange conversations. So we thought, hey, why not make a podcast? I'm Dustin. I'm Ian. And we're the Combat Casuals. 
I know, I know. I just, I, I thought that was more, com- more comfy. I thought we were gonna have video or something. No, <laughs> no. We're not that fancy. We don't have video, Christ. <laughs> Especially well, now. I've got, I've got COVID. I don't want people to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, how you doing? Good, good. Well, finally, now, now I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long uh, half an hour. <laughs> yeah i mean uh produ- i mean the audience know uh, our small audience knows production is kind of what we do whilst we're recording it so it's fine i was waiting for the tech guy to come in <laughs> <laughs> he didn't show up so yeah. yeah i just want to make sure dustin are you still there I'm still here, yeah. I'm, oh I'm my just god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought after all that, I was like, "Oh god, it's just me and Lorenzo." Stuck in the room with him again. <laughs> it's just, just me and Lorenzo. Oh god. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, well, I'm know. generally the tech guy, and I can't fix anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what you? Gonna... yeah. What do you huh? provide? please what do i, I do provide the, to the I, podcast i do the producing i do the, the tech i do all the editing what do it's you do long hair you just sit there <laughs> True. Grow your hair long. I grow my hair. that's what i pr- provide the hair the look the, the look <laughs> the signature look and you look the nothing sig- like our <laughs> like our cover picture <laughs> i did think this the other day <laughs> I, I looked at that and I was like, I don't look anything like that guy. <laughs> you used to. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, oh, man. that's how I, I remember you, Ian. That's how I remember you. <laughs> even even when you see me now, you're like, I choose to remember you the way that you I were. I painted you from memory. <laughs> yeah. Which, which one? Are you, I'm, 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 I'm looking at it now. Which one are you supposed to be, Ian? The one which one do you think I am? <laughs> I, I don't... <laughs> The one in the middle. <laughs> the one in the middle. <laughs> I, th- I thought it'd be fairly. Wait, let me let me go to our picture. Yeah, but I'm it's fair... only I, obvious if Lorenzo I, I knows what I look like. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't even think, think it's that obvious. To be fair, do you know? I mean, I maybe maybe the one on the left is supposed to be you. Is it? Oh no, no. Lorenzo, you've never seen me though, have you? So how how? No, I haven't. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. true. Are you, are you any other pictures on your on your Instagram? Hmm. On on um, which Instagram? The combat casuals one. Uh, so I'm I'm, I'm the character on the left. Um, I'm no. in it. <laughs> my face my face isn't in it yet. My back is in it twice. I was about to say there's your back's there. Yeah. Is um just just whilst we're talking as listeners enjoy our production. Does there, <laughs> anybody else have an? <laughs> does anybody else have an error? Uh, on <laughs> Brilliant. No. No. Okay. <laughs> I've got Not an again. error. Problem saving local backup audio. That's fine because Dustin, I you can, can save, save mine, so it's fine. Let's carry on. We'll Don't cut worry, that It's all good. <laughs> Christ, man! <laughs> How are we not getting Welcome better at this? This is our thirteenth episode, and we're no better than when we started. No, we're pretty bad at this. <laughs> Welcome to the shit tech audio. Thank you for coming on the. I, I guess we should say thank you for joining us, Lorenzo, as well. Yeah. We're really bad at introducing guests. As well. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. listening. Like, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> they don't sound like they look, they're taking the piss out of them the whole time. <laughs> oh. uh, we should do, uh, yeah, we should do that. We should do like introductions. Firstly, thank you for Lorenzo for joining us. Head head coach, how would you like describe your position at Wave? You own Wave, don't you? So, uh, owner you of Wave, yeah. Owner of Wave. <laughs> head, head, head coach. Yeah, head coach, owner. You could call, I guess that's the cool thing having your own gym. You could call yourself whatever you want. You could call yourself yeah. like Emperor of Wave, and we'd all just go with it. <laughs> Emperor of Wave. <laughs> then everyone's, the problem, I've set up a place where everyone just laughs at me if I say that kind of thing. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> well, I mean, we do that anyway, don't we? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's true, but to my face, not even behind my back, at least. Come on, yeah. give me some respect. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, thank you for coming on. Like, I, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, cool. Also, Listeners, if I cough throughout this, it's because I actually do have COVID. I wasn't joking at the start. I do. Mm. So if you hear me wheezing, uh, it's because I, I caught COVID. <laughs> I caught the Rona. Call, call, call an ambulance. <laughs> yeah, call... <laughs> Ian? Ian? 
<laughs> I feel these sound things. You're just going to be like, ah, oh, he's cut out. We're in actual fact, I'm dead. <laughs> At least he died doing what he loved. Me and Lorenzo just carry on without you for a while. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. We'll, amazing. We'll try to keep like discussing like gee or no gee whilst we can just hear in the background like, Ian, are you in there, Ian? <laughs> Is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> you two are like yeah no i think i think Guy's actually very good it, oh my god he's not got a pulse <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can I, wait everyone can you hear breathing <laughs> just breathing it's <laughs> 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 his, his, his final yeah. breaths <laughs> <Go on in. laughs> yeah. wheezing away oh man oh christ anyway <laughs> anyway <laughs> there we go and i'm straight at it That's um it. good lad yeah so yeah no thanks for coming on firstly also i guess i'd like to say because i haven't actually been in class either at all to say it but congratulations on eight years isn't it with wave yes yeah it is yeah wow. Kim, facebook told me yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> <laughs> must be true yeah, yeah but, no it must be yeah uh, yeah well it's been it feels like seven years after last year but it's, yeah. it's been great it's, it's, we, although we survived last year which is amazing so yeah. that's been I mean, it's been what it's been a good outcome, really. Was it uh, How's cardboard the, um... on the windows? Sorry, say again. Was it cardboard on the windows, or uh, were you were you were you good? Were you well behaved? Uh, who who listens to this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's one. That'll do. <laughs> yeah. So they were well behaved. Is what. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think everyone in the country, in all the gyms in London, were, they were all well behaved. I, yeah. I don't think anyone, yeah. My, them... my upset is that I wasn't invited to the well behavedness. No, I'm just... <laughs> you, 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 you kind of, you, you, you were invited to well behavedness, no? Yeah, oh, no. Uh, I was, I was, I was joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so no. you, you, you came to our online classes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is all, uh, always fun me taking over the lounge and people looking at me whilst i'm rolling by myself on the floor <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they didn't work for very long the online classes it was very yeah it, was, yeah. it wasn't very kind of practical was it doing jujitsu online at home by yourself no yeah um yeah <laughs> it's okay you can just say no it's like john danaher did that video didn't he which he was oh like, my god yeah yeah so oh, funny. it was so funny and him like it looked like he was wrestling his own demons because i, I he is such a funny video and i appreciate where he's coming from and i'm not going to argue with him he's probably one of the best coaches in the world but yeah it didn't it didn't it wasn't the same was it <laughs> no no it, it, it we had at the beginning we had like 20 classes mm. and then after uh, after like i think two or three weeks just no one attended anymore like for the yeah. first week it was like they were packed and then suddenly it just it fell off a cliff basically mm. no, no think, one wants to do i think when it started i i i think we all maybe felt that first lockdown wasn't going to be as long and yeah. maybe we were able to come back and then when it ended up being really long it was like ah, oh, yeah this yeah, is yeah, it just now. ended up feeling a bit flat yeah. But on yeah, the positive you know, stuff, you know. I came on here going. Sorry, go on, Lorenzo. Don't talk about COVID. At all. <laughs> I came <laughs> on <that> <laughs> <laughs> What are you saying, oh, Dustin? I was just going to say, um, I was laughing at that that John Danaher video because recently, um, well, mm. I mean, I get a lot of karate guys. I'm sure you do as well, Lorenzo. You get guys come through the club who have tried this martial art or that one, and they try to bring their experience with them and draw parallels and uh this uh client who does karate was telling me all about doing katas to get their next belt and everything and i, I was finding it quite funny imagining how it would go down doing like a jujitsu kata like just someone rolling around on the ground without an opponent um, <laughs> <laughs> like just demonstrating techniques on thin air i'm, I'm, it's quite I'm, a funny I'm sure thing. someone's thought it's a good idea somewhere for a jiu-jitsu kata. i think i think yeah. i've heard of it I, like yeah I'm, without I'm an opponent sure it does work Without an opponent, yeah. Well, I guess you could do the movement stuff, but it would just—it would still look stupid. Yeah, it like, <laughs> it's, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. I mean, even doing solo drills, and I was getting enthusiastic. I was like, we can do this. I was like, ah, 
I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> like I see um, Rafael Lovato does a lot of like movement drills and that. I'm always watching his stuff, but he's not <laughs> like doing rear naked jokes and triangles. Do you know what I mean? He's just, <laughs> he's just, he's rolling. He's like limbering up or whatever. <laughs> So I do find that quite Yeah, it's, it's more gymnastics, isn't it? That yeah, makes more sense yeah. when you when you call it gymnastics and then you go like so jiu-jitsu solo drills and you're like hit, yeah. beat up a pillow or you're trying to choke a pillow or like I don't know. Mm. I, I even I even bought one of those um dummy things that you stuff full of like material mm. and then I didn't have enough I didn't have enough material to, to stuff it with. So I, I had to buy <laughs> I had to buy like material, like used rags <laughs> online. You can buy like used <laughs> rags. And I stuffed this thing and it sat on my sofa in my room. For like the, most of the lockdown, and I used it twice, and I just gave it away. It took me ages to stuff this thing. It was like, oh my god! I, just, <laughs> I reckon that's Charlie just what and everything. You, I reckon that's just what you say when you get caught playing with your pillows. I was doing jujitsu. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. practicing. <laughs> Aggr- aggressive guard game. Yeah, <laughs> guard, <laughs> guard, guard passing. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's got a hole in it though. Right. <laughs> I was about to say I don't remember this doll, Lorenzo. You never showed this. Like, <laughs> this it, was too, it was too embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why does the mouth always look like it's gasping for air? Yeah. <laughs> why did it happen now? <laughs> so many jokes. Like it's gasping for air. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, why, oh Christ. <laughs> God, this, this is... Why have you named oh. it? Why, why have you called it a name? Uh, what, what, what was it named? I called it, I called it Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, like a guy's name. <laughs> well, well, I'd, I'd say that Char- Charlie's very ambiguous. That's both a man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very. Mo- they were very modern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, that's oh. we know what you did during lockdown then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, tra- I trained abs yesterday, and I'm sitting on a chair that doesn't have a back, and I'm in pain. I'm struggling to sit up for. <laughs> oh. I sent I Charlie over to help. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Rel- relieve some stress, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cheers, cheers, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, Mine, we're mine's twelve minutes in and my... we've not actually asked any questions. <laughs> mine's called Bob, but I think that's okay because I don't do anything dodgy with it. Oh, you have, you have it. <laughs> what was that? That's all I heard was mine's called Bob. Well, my, my grappling dummy's called Bob, but it's, it is just a grappling dummy, so I think that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's what I said as well about my. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard that, 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 that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's man! My, it's, in my, it's in my studio, but yeah, please don't check the CCTV. <laughs> <laughs> you, you and Matt Hancock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Big handful of Bob's ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh Christ! Well, we we do have some questions. <laughs> yeah, we got so, so the first um the first question that we had. Uh, on Instagram was from Lorenzo, who said, "Why is Lorenzo so great?" Um, oh, I, I, Lorenzo, could you shed some light? <laughs> telling me, tell him he's great as well. <laughs> we'll let him know. We'll send him. We'll, we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! The uh, we we also had another question from um, I guess most uh, lowly white belts with single stripes. That how how do you become a blue belt? <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> His name Ian. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, 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 to be fair. Um, mm. We 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 are, we are quite strict at belting. Yeah, I am yes. quite strict. At yeah, yeah. yeah. Grading, well, actually, in seriousness. I think it's a good question because me and Dustin have been talking about how grading works from gym to gym, and how that works across like multiple different gyms. So, in all seriousness, how do you look at grading, and how should people be graded? I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's a tough question because I want to be fair, but I don't want to give uh, grades out in ten months like the first belt 
it's, it's your, it has to see up for the next levels. Mm. So let's say you get a blue belt and then you get, you get it in 10 months In 10 months, you still get like white belts, three, three month white belts beating you up. It's possible. Mm-hmm. And you don't want that Put your confidence. And you also want to be like challenging the next level. You don't want to like get your first, first level. And then you're kind of falling behind already in terms of like challenging purple belts. You want to kind of give them a run for their money, don't you? So mm-hmm. that's how I see it. And I think a year and a half is what we aim for. Obviously, because of last year, well, more than last year, isn't it? How, how long is it now? It's almost yeah. a year and a half, isn't it? Coming up for a year and a half. Well, almost not yet a year and a half, but it's going to get there, isn't it? Yeah. But um, it's, it's so, yeah, we would have given out loads of belts last year. We didn't give out any belts because mm. I just didn't want to give out any belts during this kind of worst year of our worst year in a long time. Mm. So when it comes to training, um, I, I look at how people are doing. You don't have to necessarily know everything. But at least you have an understanding of like most positions. You have an idea of what to do in, I don't know, passing, um, in mount, in side control, in, in guard. You have, a, you have a, a good kind of understanding of it. You don't have to be good at it, but you have to know what you're doing in those positions. I, I don't want to see you like just, you end up in side control you do, you're, and you're trying to escape and you can't escape at all. There's no idea of how to escape. You kind of, you're in guard and someone just passes your guard without you being able to do any kind of, grips or mm. anything like that so mm. it's it's what i look it's what i look for and yeah and, and um i also worry about how it's going to affect the person a little bit i mean that's mm. that's the last thing i worry about but it's, it's important i've given blue belts out that i've seen were kind of a mistake in terms of psychology for the person and they mm. couldn't handle being a blue belt anymore and uh, they couldn't handle being a blue belt and they kind of set them back and mm. some of them quit i felt they quit for that reason They're like oh, i'm a blue belt now and they couldn't handle the pressure of it, I guess, mm. like white belts pressuring them from, you know, trying to kind of beat them up mm. and then purple belts doing the same because they were new belts and some people weren't ready to handle that. So mm. I worry about that as well. I don't, I don't make any mistakes, basically. I, I, I don't want to give anything yeah. too soon. I don't want to give anything too late either, unless mm. with a global pandemic. But um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> a big factor in it. <laughs> but but that, that, that's what I look for. I think, I think a lot, I, from my experience, a lot of other gyms, I mean, after I guess after a while, the blue belt is important, but gyms don't see it as the most important belt. It's just the first belt you get given. So I think a lot of places give it on time, which can be fair enough. But I just think you want. To, I, I want. To, I want to earn something when I got it. I want to feel like I deserved it. Yeah. When I got given my blue belt, I was like 15 months, and I was being. I was kind of doing really well with all the blue belts. Not, yeah, when I at that point, and I felt ready for it, and I, was like, I really want that blue belt now, so I can try and kind of. Feel like I get, get to the next level, so it's like I pass this level one, mm. um, and yeah, so that's kind of how I see it. Does that kind of makes sense. Is that like, um, yeah, no, I think that's actually really so interesting. You, you kind of focus on making sure someone has a completely full game, like so that they're able to do something from every position, yeah, exactly. I mean, they don't have to be good at it at all, like, like it's, it's really hard to get good if, they're, if they were that good, they'd be like a purple belt, then wouldn't they? If they, if they could do it yeah. pretty well, so it's kind of like. At least they can defend well enough, mm-hmm. so they know that they're consciously escaping. They're not just like laying there. They're, if someone gets them in an armbar, they're not um, just holding their arm out straight, trying to escape, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. When it's already fully on, which I, I've been there at the beginning. So yeah, yeah, yeah definitely that makes yeah. sense. I, I, I think it's, it goes back because I remember when I first started. I think I think it's linked to I don't want people to go through the same discomfort at white belt that I went through. Mm. Like my first competition, I got stuck on a side control for six minutes, but it was, it, I got to the final by holding onto my guard and mm. um, getting advantages. So I got, I think I got maybe was two fights where I, I just held the guy in guard. I went for a sweep and then I got an advantage. Yeah. But then in, in this final, I think the guy saw me doing this and he managed to like avoid it. And I think he took me down and ended up on side control. Mm. And I spent, I spent the whole time um, with him on side control until the last minute. Mm-hmm. and I think it's on YouTube. This is my, one of my one fights on YouTube, and I got out at the last minute. I was so gassed. I, I, I didn't know how to escape, mm-hmm. and I was like, ah. Oh. The first thing I thought when I got out, like, make a note, you need to learn how to escape <laughs> the next competition, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I spent the last minute trying to pass his guard, and I was just, I was just gassed, and I don't, I don't, I don't want you guys to have that issue if you see what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I figured by the time you get to blue belt, or even when you first start out, you should be able to do, that's what I want to teach you. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. No, definitely. It makes a lot of sense. I think you hear about grading in a lot of different gyms being, as you say, I think blue belt always feels... Well, I, I don't know. I haven't got a blue belt, but I, <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> you hear about it being like a measure of time rather than a measure of skill or a yeah. measure of what somebody can do. And I think that's always something that when me and Dustin have talked about it before, it always sounds like almost backwards to just give somebody a belt based on how long they've been there. Because it could just be that you're giving a belt to somebody and they don't actually have those fundamental skills that you're talking about that you need to get out of those things. Exactly that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, give, give, if you give it to, to 10 different people for 10 months of training, mm. you'd have 10 different blue belts, like completely different outcomes. You wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, I mean, it's, it's hard to set standardize it anyway, like to be objective, mm. but if you just gave people for 10 months, it's like some people train twice a week. Some people train six times a week. Some people kind of just, uh, they come in with a physical background of something else. I mean, even just going to the gym makes a big difference, you know, yeah. um, just in terms of how you, not even strength, I'm not talking about strength, but how you, how you, how you move your limbs um, in a kind of coherent way, rather than kind of like someone who's never been to the gym who can't, you know, their, their left leg and right leg are kind of not independent enough or, yeah. um, that mind muscle. So this, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can get someone from yoga coming in and, this, and they and they suddenly like they can move their body in a way that it kind of makes sense for jujitsu. And so you can't compare that person with someone just done 10 months or twice a week who's never trained anything in his life. So and it's not fair on that person when they get their blue belt and they're still getting beaten up by everyone. How is that? How is that fair on them? Yeah. They want to feel that they can do something at that point, not just like, oh, yeah, I've got a great. I've got my first belt. That's like I've ticked the box. It's not about that, though, is it really? I mean, no. Yeah. yeah, you can go and no, do karate true. again. I, uh, so, <laughs> well, Lorenzo, I'm sure you get this also. Um, I mean, at my club, because um, it's strictly no gi and it's an MMA club, not a jiu-jitsu club, um, I don't tend to do belts, um, but I do bands for people who like ask for them. Like some, some people kind of want to know roughly where they're at. So I provide that for those people, but I don't force it on anyone yeah. else. So one of my guys, um, obviously won't say any names, but one of my guys, he's very, he's been coming for quite a while. He's very knowledgeable. Like he knows it all. He can advise someone else the best thing to do from a good position. But his, like you said, he doesn't really have that mind muscle connection. He can't move his body freely. Um, He's not very flexible. He's not particularly strong. You know, he's not athletic. So he struggles to put his knowledge into practice, but he has all the knowledge and it becomes one of those things that, so at what point do you give someone their next belt um, when they know it all, but it's just kind of waiting on them to be able to perform it? It's very tricky. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can get that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I said something. That's yeah. somebody calling Renzo being like, what the fuck are you saying about it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say anything about me. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I've give, I have given belts out where... Um, so let's say someone's been a a belt for a certain length of time, and it's like it's come to a point now where it's long enough. Let's say three years or something, and it's like time for the next belt. I mean, okay, I have given some of those belts as well, and yeah, it, at some point you you feel kind of bad not holding someone back that long, mm-hmm. and and maybe I'm I'm kind of. I'm going to be optimistic. Hopeful is the wrong word. I should be giving on skill level, but like I'm hopeful that on the next belt, maybe they'll get kind of suddenly click into place and they'll get it. Mm. But, but but then people fight for different reasons. People could train for different reasons, right? So does it like um, it matters to me at the beginning, but then it comes a point where I'm like, okay, this person's never going to be a world champion or or a champion of yeah. in the in the way that you know jujitsu terms. But in terms of themselves, they've done a good job. And they've been training consistently for, I don't know, three years, let's say, past, let's say they're a white belt training for like three years. And, and the name's Ian. I was about, <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. a minute. In a minute. Man, this all sounds it, familiar. <laughs> Ian, that's so heavy. Like, Ian, you'll never be a champion. You're not that good. <laughs> I don't think you should compete. But you're doing okay for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. It's, it's, not about, it's, not, it's not about Ian, but in my head, I'm like, <laughs> so heavy 
<laughs> if that was about me, I think I would actually probably break down. That would quit. probably be a lot. Just to be like, you're never going to be champion at anything. You're never going to be that good at anything. But compared to yourself, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah. You're a champion in my eyes, Ian. <laughs> if, you were, if you were to fight another Ian, I'd pick Ian. <laughs> 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 exactly that yeah because yeah at some, at some point you have to give the belt <laughs> i'm not gonna lie whenever whenever you do give me a blue belt i'm always gonna be like this is bullshit <laughs> did, did i really <laughs> you're just gonna get it with a heavy sigh that's oh, there you go ian <laughs> I tried to let you down nicely, in, but <laughs> <laughs> good <laughs> job. It's just good the three job. of us, right? <laughs> just the three yeah. of us. In here. <laughs> Love you, this one isn't actually getting published. You're just this is an opportunity for you to just tell the, me. This is an in, this is an intervention for you to <laughs> <Yeah>. quit. <laughs> Stop doing jujitsu. <laughs> This Dustin whole podcast has been a ruse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. D- Dustin called me before the show, and he told me that, like, okay, we're going to set Ian up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he knows what's going on. Oh, oh man. Lorenzo, please, if, if Ian ever has to do any kind of testing for his belt, please make him do a kata. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> record it, just to be like, yeah, no. Film it, yeah. <laughs> it's for my records. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll put it. We'll put it on our Instagram. We've, we've just recorded. <laughs> oh man, that is hilarious. But it, it's interesting though to hear that because it's. I think there's a lot of people who, when they start uh, doing any martial arts, I mean, it's different. I don't know. I've never not. I've never really done any other martial arts. God, my English is terrible today. Um, <laughs> today, I'm going to stop talking. Dustin, you take over. <laughs> Well, I don't know what you were saying, Ian. I can't just finish your <laughs> sentence when I don't know where it was going. It's, I was going to say, I think a lot of people, when they start doing a martial arts or start doing jiu-jitsu, they don't know, I guess, how that progression works or what somebody looks for. And um, it's interesting to know because, as I said, I think if you go to different gyms, there's a really different philosophy towards giving belts. And I think other people also, we've mentioned karate, but I think other people look at it as other martial arts as well. And go, oh, there must be like a way of tick boxing, like how to get a belt, or is just not how it works, really. No, and I, and I actually think um, the grade is mainly for other people. It's not for yourself. Yeah, it's like you, like you were saying, Dustin. It's kind of, you, kind of like it's about so other people can see your progression and see where you're at yeah. when they come and spar with you. Well, it's, that... it's more about it's more for other people's benefits. I, that's how I see it. It's well, so yeah, really... I've co- I've kind of brought that. I think. When I started doing jiu-jitsu, and this was all the way back with Dustin and York, uh, the the way of doing it there was like, you know, similar to what you were saying, Dust, that you, you do it training with people. There wasn't belts. It wasn't like a, you know, you're at this level, you're at this grade. Muay Thai it was always, style. Yeah, it was, it was always, we always did it no gi and it was always MMA style focused. So then when I came to London, I guess the focus for me has always been to compete and to go to competition because that's in my head that's the way i can tell like what level i'm at against people who i don't know because we're in the gym i can roll with x amount of people and kind of know my level at the gym so going out to compete with people is probably more of a good comparison so when i lost at competition i knew how bad i was so i I was able to go yeah yeah i'm pretty bad at this (laughs) But okay, but competing is a different different thing yeah, to grading no, no. against. Well. Yeah. I, I'm just yeah. going to say I did win one, but I'm just going to say that. <laughs> and then and then also here you go. So you, 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 not necessarily you, that you were bad. The person mm. you you were competing against could have been tra- could have been a white belt for like a year longer than you. Yeah, he could yeah, have been, yeah, yeah. Um, he could come in from another. He could have come in from judo, and they yeah. just made him compete like, at yeah. white belt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. um, we we have blue belts that I'm holding back right now a little bit. Because yeah. they want to compete compete this year, they haven't competed for a year, but they could probably like they could be probably be purple right now. So mm. it's kind of mm. like, but but they want to compete, and you want them to kind of win a few more things at that level before you give them the next level, like to uh, and it, So it's it's a very, it's, it's and it's sandbagging. I I I've known people who started training with me. They went somewhere else, 
and I think they're still just a purple belt, maybe. Mm. They started with me, and they've they've been training um, consistently throughout, but just kept changing gyms, and they're still only purple belts, and they're winning all the competitions. And it's like, mm. but you've been training for I've been training for fifteen years, so sixteen years. So it's like, um, when does that become? A weird, like, it's a, when, when does it matter? It doesn't matter, really. I mean, yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You can't really compare yourself against. Yeah. I mean, that competition was an interesting one anyway, because the person I, I lost to, because I won, won one and lost two. And the first one, weirdly, coincidentally, was a guy who has another podcast, which is far more successful than this podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's a just guy, feeding you everything, uh, Ian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he got me in a guillotine and he's beating me on the ratings, you know. <laughs> um, but he, he, I think he's like on a podcast with a guy from Made in Chelsea, I think. Like, uh, his name's like Francis, I think. And he was really nice, like really, really nice guy. But I was this just like, I had no... <laughs> Sorry? Is this going somewhere? Well, no, but <laughs> just, well, yeah. But should, should we give, give the name? Give the name give, might as well give the name of the better podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, where it was going is I bumped into what's his name? Who's like he does the Elephant Castle wave? What was his name? Steve. Steve. Steve was there. I bumped good into Steve. Steve. And yeah. good old Steve, He's and we were chatting. Fan, he? <laughs> yeah, he listens to this all the time. He's like, "Hello, a... Hello Steve." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, me, and him were chatting, and there was a guy in like I think the weight category above what I was in, who was a white belt, but he looked like really old. Like I don't want to be mean, but he looked like <laughs> way older than anybody there. <laughs> and I, I, and he was a big dude as well. He wasn't like a small guy. He was really muscular. And Steve was like, I'm almost certain that guy's a purple belt. And I was like, oh, how do you know? And he's like, I'm fairly certain I've seen him at another dri- gym at an open mat. And he's a purple belt. And he was in this competition as a white belt, which made me think, is there any way that you can police that? Or do people just join being like, oh, yeah, I'm a white belt? And it's like, well, how do you prove that? I mean, there are there are services out there. There's a belt checker now. It's belt yeah. which I'm I'm trying to get everyone at Wave One, but it's complicated and it's and it's I'm not a, very. I'm, I'll let you know. I'm fairly on that with my white belt. I'm on there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it's good. I, I mean, and it's a, a friend of mine made that Christian from oh, the awesome. Club of the camps. Um, but that's 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 that seemed like a good way, but it hasn't taken on taken mm. up the way I, I thought it would take up take on because IBJF have um, banned them all from competing so the ibjf banned the whole of the bjj globetrotters from competing as a team oh right and then that kind of killed the belt checker project a little bit for them why did they um, do that because they came third i think in the whole rankings because Mm. there's so many teams because it's a it's an affiliation but it's not um you don't pay them anyone can become an affiliate and they can grade you and they can help you out like with registration for competitions and stuff and so IBGF wasn't making as much money as they could do from like um, uh, all the smaller right. affiliate stuff. So right. they ban- they banned them basically. That's that's how it seems. I mean, they right. they, they were they were claiming some things about um, how the grades weren't done properly or that they weren't an actual team because they weren't. I don't, I don't know what it was, but it was quite quite vague and quite bullshit from the sound of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but. There goes there goes wave at the IBGF, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but never yeah, competing yeah. there again. Yeah, <laughs> but but uh, but um, yeah, that's one way of doing it. And mm. Otherwise, there's no re- there's no real way of policing it though. I mean, especially in nogi because you've got the advanced, intermediate, beginners um, division. So you, and they don't check who's entering which division. We mm. have um, um I, when I first did the nogi comp, I thought this guy he was like massive like roided up um apparently mma fighter so he shouldn't have been doing the beginner division that's when I, my first nogi comp and all i remember all i remember from that competition is he caught me in americana and i looked at his arm and i went it's as big as my leg <laughs> <laughs> and then and then i felt my arm pop <laughs> oh jesus oh, so I, was like, oh, oh, I should tap here <laughs> so I tapped, that's what i remember i was looking at his arm going is that his arm or his leg? <laughs> it's about my leg. <laughs> it's like, it's like my, my arm was like a little twig. <laughs> just like, oh my lord! He just, he just cranked it on. And I was like, okay, I'm tapping, I'm tapping. Yeah, and then I was like, that hurt. <laughs> Plenty of people like to say that strength and size doesn't matter in jujitsu. 
it's well, true. Well, when they're, it's true, it's when they're true. Like, that's yeah. bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, when their arms are bent and legs. How dare you, Dustin? That's how I sell the whole of Wave. <laughs> it's my main selling point. <laughs> oh, man. I, talking of no gi, though, me and Dustin always discuss this, I guess. I, I mean, it's no secret that I really prefer no gi. Like, I, I think it, it, I prefer doing it. But which one do you, I guess, lean to or at least look at and go? Because I think I was speaking to Ian in class the other week and he was saying how he feels, you know, no geese where it's going to go because that's just more popular now. Um, but what do you take on the no gee versus gee situation, I guess? Um, I, 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 I'm, so I'm 50-50 pretty much. Apart from as I've gotten older, I'm, I'm now more gee, I think. I think 51, 49, I'd say gee. Mm. Um, because just because of my knees, I can't afford a year out. Because I, I, w- I wouldn't compete at no gi. Um, I think well, that's probably a lie. I'll probably do it again as well. But um, lying to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but but I am I am worried about the leg lock stuff at my age because I'm like I wouldn't I might not tap in time because I'm I get kind of in the moment mm. and then your your knees your knee goes and you know, you have a year out. Also, the the geese. There's so much more you can do with the gi. Yeah, okay, it's better to watch, but it's kind of fun to compete in. It's kind of fun on a personal competing level, mm-hmm. more than more than maybe the no gi is in terms of when you're competing. Yeah, look, it will look boring from the outside, but there's so much more you can do once you get going and so much more mm-hmm. you can defend. And it's kind of um, more strategic, I feel, than no gi still. Um, yeah, no gi's popular now. And I, I, I think it'll take over in terms of pe- what people watch. But I think people will still do, do the gi. Yeah. I, yeah, 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 and and also yeah, nogi makes sense for MMA, and also nogi when you first start nogi, it's way easier to escape things. You, you're not being t- submitted as much, so it's a lot softer on your ego in terms of yeah, like, no. um, yeah, it's, it's like you, you can slip out of things. Even now, like I fight fight with my blue belt, he gets me an armbar. I'm like, thank you, nogi. And I just put my arm out. <laughs> just yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, because <'cause>, <laughs> it's like sweaty. So you, but in the gi, you can't do that. So. In the gi, it's harder to escape submissions, mm. and in no gi, it's harder to get submissions. Even leg locks. I mean, like your legs will just slip out mostly unless the guy's really good at them. It's really hard to kind of trap that leg in there. So I think that's why people like it because it's it's more forgiving on you and mentally than than the gi. Because the, when the gi, once you get stuck underneath someone and they're holding you down with your gi, you're like, I can't move. My mm. gi's kind of become like this. Um, it's, it's trapped me on the floor. So. I kind of feel that's the difference. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah it kind yeah. of. It can. It could also be the same the other way around, though. Like when you're highly skilled at no gi, and then you might get like a some just massive or super athletic, like strong guy comes down white belt and just through brute force can like escape some submissions, and you're just like, for fuck's sake, <laughs> like, gotta, gotta <laughs> yeah, deal yeah, with exactly. This it's monster. True. Yeah, it's, it's true, right? It's like no, no gi. Yeah. You, you can't even submit them, and like it's, it's really hard to submit anyone. Um, Unless you get their back, unless you you got like easier positions, but you can't do arm bars from nogi that easily. You can't do. Yeah, it's definitely slippery. Well, yeah, I um yeah. my I've never met you, Lorenzo. I don't know your strength or size or anything, but so I um my my studio is quite modest. My little MMA studio. It's inside of a gym, which is um a big bodybuilding gym in in York. So um okay, it's, it's quite an interesting mix of people that come down um. So obviously I have all of my regular clients who are just, you know, MMA, MMA guys. And uh, my mat enforcer is 78 kilo purple belt. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big-ish. I'm about 95 kilos. And uh, so we get guys who will come in from bodybuilding or powerlifting or strongman or something and they want to have a go. And uh, I tend to set my little 78 kilo mat enforcer on them because often if I feel like if I'm roughly their size – it doesn't really speak to jujitsu's prowess for me to beat these guys. So I set my little 78, I say little, that's not little, but to me it is my little 78 kilo guy <laughs> on these guys. You know what I mean? To tap them out left, right and center. And that's, um, <laughs> that's, that's how I yeah, tend that's, to do it in our place. I'm like six foot five. <laughs> no, no, <I'm> <laughs> why, why, why are you laughing, Ian? <laughs> I was about to say, there's someone on the podcast who's met you, Lorenzo. <laughs> trying to reinvent yourself, Ian. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was 
what does my look like? Well, that's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> you can say whatever you want. You can be like, I'm six foot five built. I'm like I'm, huge. I'm built like a, yeah, I'm huge. I'm like 110. No. I'm about, I'm about, the, same, I'm about the same size as your enforcer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm about, I'm, right now, I'm about 78. I've been locked out one. I was like 95. So, I, I, yeah. But it wasn't, wow. it wasn't, it was quite soft. Yeah. Just and now, lockdown. now I'm like down 78. Yeah, just through eating. <laughs> just through that's eating. A, that's a bit of a jump, one. man. Yeah, yeah. I, I do that that's a lot, though. It's my third time losing the weight. I kind of. Oh, I mean, you oh. do look really good for it, like 100%. Yeah, no. I, I, this, All this right, Ian. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, on, I was saying he looks good. I mean, I'm 90. I'm 90. We weighed me the other day. I was like feeling like shit. Yeah, I've put on weight, man. I don't oh, know man. where from, though. I don't think I've like because I was doing all the weights and stuff that you'd like uh, t- uh, told me to do and stuff. And um, I, 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 Simone's like, oh no, I think it's it's probably muscle weight. And I'm like, no, nah, it's, it's definitely don't, not. Um, don't, don't involve me too much in your mess. You love them kettlebells. <laughs> I love kettlebells. Why? <laughs> like, well, well, don't go so around good. telling people that I'm putting you on like kettlebell programs because that is absolutely <laughs> not the case. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm. Um, I think it's more diet than anything else. To be honest, you, with you were around that's eighty what... when I last saw you, weren't you? When I was yeah, in London, eighty. Yeah. yeah, eighty. That's like when I competed. I went to. I think it was like <laughs> seventy eight or something like that. Because I only lost like two kg, whereas now yeah. I weigh about ninety. So I need but you to. Came I... up, you, mm. you came in. You came in after lockdown, saying you felt good, <laughs> and then this week you're like, yeah, I feel like shit. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was still the same. It was still the same way. <laughs> I don't know. I think I don't feel, or at least I'm not one to judge. I guess weight gets comes on slowly. I definitely think I put on mm. some weight, but mm. I think it's easy to do during those periods. But I, I don't know. I think I there was a point where I was doing weights, and I know <laughs> your dreaded word of kettlebells, but I was doing a lot of that quite regularly. So I was doing kettlebells, and I was doing like weightlifting as well before going back to do jujitsu, mm. and I was going for a run almost every week as well. And that's all kind of just slowly like trickled away. And then as things were starting to get back into a swing of it. So, you know, I was getting into class and I was trying to find a, a routine with now having going to class as well, because that's the most important thing, going to class. Uh, mm. And then bang, I get COVID as I'm getting started. It's starting everything being back into the swing of it. So like, you know, weights, doing the gym on Mondays and Fridays and doing kettlebells three times a week and then doing jiu-jitsu like five times a week i was trying to fit in mm. uh and then yeah no then i got covid <laughs> so that's kind of stopped <laughs> out. i uh i won't lie lorenzo because because you said because uh, well i just thought about oh i haven't seen him yet i had a quick look on your instagram and just as i was saying like oh fucking kettlebells and i saw you do a poster of some kettlebells and i was like yeah yeah i'm oh, outnumbered oh, oh, oh. here <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's easy to do over lockdown though right i, I didn't have any oh, weights of course. Yeah, so I yeah, the, yeah. The, I, i've got up to 40 kilo kettlebell now so that kind of i i was i was started swinging the 40 kilo um mm, but I've, not, I've now switched to it's, it's not crossfit but it's like crossfitty gym near me in chizik okay and uh, in my gym and it's like a it's forge warehouse it's called and they've got their own so they do upper body lower body it's a lot of olympic lifting um powerlifting stuff and i've been doing that for the last three weeks oh nice and that's been that's been amazing like so i'm, I'm really happy to move on to something different so i, I, I change yeah. it up so, so i like kettlebells at the moment then now, now i've got this new you know, like powerlifting olympic lifting thing that i'm doing for i want to do that till i, I feel strong enough yeah. and then i'll see what i'll do next yeah i keep changing it nice. up i get bo- i get bored every few months and then i, I feel like i hit i hit a peak in it like a plateau in terms of my progress or I just, I just boredom generally. Mm. And then I, I change it, but yeah. And I've, I've, started, I've, I've done, I've done a lot of yoga as well recently, yoga, and then just jujitsu. That's, that's something yoga I really hard, need to man. start doing yoga. Yeah. But once you get, once you get in the rhythm of yoga, it's actually not hard anymore. Mm. And then it's like, so you burn like, what, I burn 250 calories, 300 calories in an hour. Of, cause at the beginning it was like really tiring mm. and now I've become good at it. Not good at it, but like um, comfortable with it. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, but you, um, also, you're, you're a big guy, Dustin. So it's a bit different. I think it's different when you're a bigger guy. You have different. Well, like carrying your weight, you, you mean? Yeah, carrying your weight. So yoga will be harder. 
at like 95 kilos, even if you're used to carrying it around, then it would be at like my 78 kilos now. Mm. So it's all different, isn't it? It's all different body shapes. What yeah, do you do, Dustin? You're just lifting. Pretty much, yeah. And I, I kind of cycle between like, I, I, I tend not to focus on like hypertrophy training, but um, yeah, more, more the strength kind of thing. So I go through like long phases of focusing on powerlifting and trying to get the big three up and then yeah, mm. just kind of pad it out with accessory work, but it's more more just your standard gym training. Do you know what I mean? I I, I used to I used to do uh, like some CrossFit and that. I was like I dabbled in a little bit of like strongman type training before, but I kind of just feel more at home and easier just with your regular standard gym training. Yeah, I mean I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this um, this class class base works for me because it takes away my, my thinking of, of planning it. So yeah. I just show up. They give you like a you know, work out to do and you're like, okay, I can do that. Just do it, cool. get, get through it. And then you forget about it, don't you? So yeah, I, yeah. I, I do enjoy the classes because I'm trying to focus on improving my jiu-jitsu now. Cause I'm, I'm, again, I want to kind of fix a few things. So I'm kind of, I, I want to compete in August. I am competing in August. Mm. If I don't get, if, if, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, Hi. if COVID yeah. doesn't if, catch if, us. If, yeah, exactly that. Let's see what happens. I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I, I, I kind of feel like it's going to open up though, don't you guys? Yeah. I think it's going to be fine by now. Yeah. Don't say so, it, really. man. Don't just don't say anything. Just yeah, that's true, yeah. I it. don't know if anything's going to happen and I'm not going to jinx it. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> but, I just don't feel confident, man. Like it's it's just been too long for me to have any confidence in anything changing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so that's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not happy. Yeah. But, but but then but that's interesting because York's different from London. I, I think London we feel more optimistic about things opening up whereas yeah. I think it's a different view on outside London, yeah. like how it's going to go. Because I think I think we're pretty like we we feel pretty sure it's going to open up in July, but then yeah. a lot of places suffered worse in terms of like um, being locked down for longer. And that's true. It's a weird one. I, I agree. I think in London, I, I, when they delayed it, I was a bit like, oh shit. Like I, I even at that time, I think in London it felt like it was still going to progress into more restrictions easing. Um, but yeah, I think it feels like it. I I I don't know. It's it maybe it is just a city thing that you have like because I to be honest, before I got COVID, before that, like um, my life had semi returned back to normality with having to go to work, getting to go to jujitsu, seeing my partner. The only thing I couldn't really do regularly was probably go see my parents as much. But like it did feel things were getting to some normality so i don't know maybe it does feel perhaps optimistic i'm hoping that it does because i'd like to compete as well this year if i could but we just have to see i guess yeah and enter brighton yeah 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 that's the one cool. yeah, i remember you yeah, sent me the yeah, link for it yeah, 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 I, yeah i was i was looking at it and i was like can i get down to that 78 again can i physically do that <laughs> I was of like, you can, I do... man. you're not that big yeah no no i actually i think it's weird lorenzo you're saying just turning up for a class and then telling you do these weights i think the ones that i enjoyed the most doing was when we obviously were training together dustin and you would be like this is what we're doing and i would just do it i think sometimes people just kind of work on that mentality of you turn up and people just tell you how to do something and then you get on with it uh, and some people prefer it the the other way where you plan <laughs> what you're going to do with the accessories and go along with it mm. Well, I'm I'm such a shit that I'd just be like, someone would be right today. We're doing this, and I'd just go, no, <laughs> I, I want to do this. <laughs> my, my, I did my legs yesterday. I'm not doing. I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny though. With we were talking before about big guys at a gym, um, because obviously, like, um, there's been there's a few bigger guys at Wave who, you know, when you roll with them, I don't know about you lorenzo but when i roll with them i'm like jesus um but i was talking because i've been trying to get simone to come down to wave and she's always been like oh yeah i would like to do that and and it'd be easier if she was living in london um but she's always kind of bit like well i I don't like the idea of like these giant people just like you know ragdolling her i guess and I think you that's have no something. Choice in the matter, as soon as you, <laughs> yeah. the mat, you get grabbed by one of these big men. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to roll? Oh no, thank you. You'll fucking roll. You'll... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but I have seen in our gym perhaps times when I've l- I've not been involved. But I've looked over and say a smaller, you know, blue belt who's a girl has been like a little bit. I guess what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> it, it being like crushed by a giant white belt. Like we're just his size is just massive, and I'm always like. That's a unpleasant situation to be in. <laughs> like, I wonder, I, I wonder if he goes it's, it's, home and tweets like, "Oh, my class is such bullshit." Like, still haven't been promoted after smashing these blue belts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I've heard worse. I've, I mean, I've heard worse than that one. I've heard like this one guy goes, "Look, I beat that guy up." And I was like, "Which guy?" And he goes, "He was pointing at this guy." And I was like, hey, "That's his first class. He's in his pro class." <laughs> Yeah. Lorenzo, why are you telling what I said to you last week? Come on. <laughs> and, then, and then he went to me, my name's Ian, I want a blue belt. Like, no. <laughs> no, man. No. He actually said my name's Ian. <laughs> so, you know, it was quite random. <laughs> you were like, what a knob. <laughs> That's why I think to be a blue belt, is to be able to meet people who don't train. <laughs> But, oh man! But, 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 but it's got to happen, and isn't that part of the reason people are training? I mean, okay, we have one rule: you can train with whoever you want to train with, or yes. not train, or, or not train with whoever you want. To. If someone comes up to you and says, "Can I train?" You can say no. There's no like judgment. You could just say no. Yeah. So it's how you get over like people making choices over, over religion as well. I'm not a fan of this, where people can't roll with women, but mm. because we have this have this rule where you can roll with whoever you want to roll with. I don't mind. It makes sense. If you don't want to roll with someone, just say no, whoever it is. If you don't feel like rolling with someone, just say no. Um, we don't have to have a reason. but it's, it's, So women should be able to say no to rolling with these big guys. But at the same time, um, you're, you're partly there for self-defense, aren't you? I mean, yeah, as, a woman, as a woman. And um, I, I, we, we, used to have a, we, have, we had a women's class and the women's teacher. And I was like, should we put some more women's class on? I mean, they weren't doing very well. Because I put them on Saturday mornings and it was too early or whatever. I yeah. never find a time that would fit. So I said, How about we get, give them a more prime time position in one of the evening classes? And she was like, No. She's like, Women's only class will start separating the women out from the men. And that kind of defeats the point. You want to kind of have them mixing up. Um, mm. And I agree. I agree. I, I think women's only classes only work um, occasionally, like for like maybe fine tuning a competition game against other women. But in terms of like learning jiu-jitsu, you, you, you want those bigger guys. You, you you need to deal with them. And they shouldn't be mean to you anyway. I, I, don't, I don't think... Um, it's easy to be mean at the beginning. It's easy to be mean when you don't do, don't know how to defend something. Mm. Once someone has to defend something, it's hard to actually get injured, even if you're smaller. You can always brace for impact with different things. Even I, I face big, huge white belts, like 110 plus kilos. And I'm, I'm like, if this guy moves wrong, he's going to break my leg. But... I know how to deal with it. So you kind of, I brace for impact and I slowly work my way through. If, if I feel like he's going to be dangerous, start going crazy, I'll kind of wait a bit and stall him out and then go to the next steps slowly and carefully. But that takes time to learn. Definitely. And I think, I th- I, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think anyone can deal with any size and you should be patient. You know, okay, you're going to get in bad positions and you're going to be patient and you're going to be, have to figure out how to look after yourself in that position until the guy gets tired or runs out of things to do and makes a mistake. So, that's kind of what jiu-jitsu is about. Um, I think, yeah, yeah I, th- I agree. I think also, you, I know it sounds silly, but I think there's an element of psychology in it as well. Because like, I think for a while, you could think, oh, they're too big and I will never be able to deal with that. Whereas yeah. if you think, oh no, it'll be fine. And as you say, know that you'll get into bad positions. But you get into bad positions with everybody. It doesn't depend on their size. Like You're going to get in bad positions. Um, yeah. And then having that mindset of like, I'll get into bad positions, but I'll get into better ones. Like I will get into better ones, so it'll be fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I guess that's it's just something we've. I guess we've had a question about before, haven't we, Dustin? From a different um, podcast, like uh, just like general questions for us was why you don't see as many women in classes. Yeah, and and why is that a factor? And I wondered if that like that attitude of oh, I don't want to, you know. I, no, not attitude, but I guess that stigma, that's the better word, of like, mm. oh, I don't want to get like crushed by this giant guy is something that affects women coming to classes. Likely it will. I, I, yeah, I think, I think it's... I, I, I don't, and, and guys can be stupid when it comes to this stuff, really. They, they, like, some guys have a different idea of competing and like different kind of 
ego and pride come into it a little bit sometimes. You just avoid those people. You, you can see those people a mile off. Mm. Um, I mean, I guess, yeah, I, I, if you're an instructor, you have to watch out for who your people are rolling with as well. You, you should know who, how your students are and how like, most of them are fine. And then you get the, like, they're not even doing it on purpose. A lot of the time it's not even on purpose that they're going hard. They just don't know, they don't, they don't know their strength. They don't know their uh, limits. They, they don't know yeah. how to move necessarily. So, so it feels like they're going hard. It feels like it's malicious even, um, but it's not mm-hmm. being malicious. It's just, it's just how they do things. Um, I don't think that, like, I remember when I first rolled a 16 year old kid who was like a rugby player and he was like, I don't know how big he was. He was huge. And he started rolling with me and I, I was like, he's being malicious. And then I thought, like, no, he's not. You looked at him and he was like, just happy. He's, he's just going, you know, he's a 16 year old kid going really hard. And cause he can, cause he's only 16. And, um, I was like, okay, it's not him being malicious, it's just how he's rolling. And this is mm-hmm. mostly how it is being a white belt at the beginning. After a while, you learn, like, you know, when you, you go to, you, you say to about someone, they're really strong. And then you wonder, you, you never wonder what they think about you. And most of the time, I bet they think you're really strong as well. And that's why they're going extra strong as well. So mm-hmm. but you don't, you only, you only get one side of that story. So in your head, you're like, I was going really hard on him and he was going really hard on me, but I think he was stronger than me. And even though it's pretty stalemate for most of the fight, you just feel their strength more than you do your own trying to fight back. Mm-hmm. You just feel like he's taking my energy by, you know, pushing back on, on me. So I think it's not so clear in your own mind what's going on, not for a long while. And you just got to accept that they feel, you have to ask, maybe even ask them, do you feel, how, how's that going? Like, do I feel like I'm going strong? Or, mm. or, or go, go or if, it's, if it's a girl, go easier, please. Uh, you know, just tell them to go easier. I, I think you, Part of it, you don't, they don't want to tell them to go easier because then it's like, oh, I'm a girl. They're going to go too easy on me, um, which is also fair enough. But there's a way, it must be a way, a nice way for both people to kind of improve while sparring together. Mm-hmm. So you've got to find that happy medium. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What, um, s- similar to what you were saying before, Lorenzo, and similar to the question you just asked, Ian, my, uh, me and Ian have spoke about this a few times and I'd be interested to hear your opinion, is... Um, <clears throat> Obviously, some people just go and train because they want to compete or whatever. And, you know, they're, they're always watching their weight so they know what category they're going to be in. And so my answer to most people's question when it's, you know, some people like to complain, oh, they're too strong or they're too big. And, you know, girls might like to say, oh, I don't want to train with a guy that's bigger than me or whatever. Like you were saying about the self-defense aspect, I've always been more of a realist. Uh, like I like martial arts for fighting more so than as a sport. Um, I loved the idea of the UFC with no weight divisions because it was pure. I, I like the idea of people training the martial art to defend themselves against anyone, not just someone who weighs what they weigh and is their gender. Um, so that's kind of bit, always been my response to people when they complain about someone being too big. Is it's like, well, yes, they are, and that is a, that is an advantage. But you're doing yourself a complete disservice by refusing to roll with that person because that's a situation that may crop up in life or anywhere and even if you don't win um like being in a negative situation be, being under mount having someone on your back being inside mount with someone bigger stronger than you even if you don't win on the mats if that ever happens to you in real life at least you'll be calmer like at least at least you've experienced it before it's nothing new you won't panic the same way that you would probably panic had you never experienced that before and i think that's something it's that true, people don't I- really take into consideration mm-hmm yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I, don't, I, I think you should, to, and also it's kind of fun being up the bigger person if you can, and it's fun. It's a fun. It's a fun challenge. Like, um, I, 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 I always enjoyed it, even as a white belt. Like, if, if a big person, I'm like, I'm gonna get you, and then they get you, and you're like, oh damn, and you keep going. I don't know. I always had a optimism that I would be able to beat that person. That's kind of why I chose jujitsu at the beginning, because I thought that would be possible if I if I put my mind to it and I get my techniques right. Um, speaking of girls. The first girl I ever sparred with, she beat the crap out of me. And she was a tiny little blue belt girl. I was a big yeah. white belt guy who didn't know what was going on at all. I didn't know. Um, and she beat the shit out of me. And I was like, and the first thing I thought was, this is exactly, exactly how it should be. <laughs> it's like technique beats my size. I yeah. could have like yeah. crushed or whatever. And then she just, she just went at me because she knew I'm bigger. She didn't hold back at all. She just went hard at me at the beginning. I was like, oh, shit, what the fuck? Tap, 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 tap. tap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, this is amazing. I thought exactly this, this is this is why I chose jiu-jitsu in the first place because that's yeah. that can happen. Um, yeah, if we're both equally skilled, uh, the size is gonna make a difference. And like you said, Dustin, yeah, even if you're e- equally skilled and you, the person takes your back and you survive it, that's gonna help you in 
in in in real life to calm down. Yeah. When it happens, nothing like that's going to happen to you in real life. You're always going to face someone who's like not trained. People, are, I think, people are trained are like ninety percent less likely to start a fight in the street anyway. Definitely. My, especially jujitsu. I, I don't know about striking, but jujitsu, well, I feel. Yeah, hundred percent. That well, that'd be a weird thing to attack someone with, anyway, wouldn't it? Not punches, but like yeah, 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 so, <laughs> so, 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 Oh, you fucking dickhead! Like you, you dinged my car door or whatever. Like come here and pull him in the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, who was um, was it? Was it that Joe Sh- Schilling? Joe Schilling, who just yeah. smashed yeah. that guy in the pub the other day. Yeah, I've uh, yeah, seen yeah. that video. It's crazy. No, I I this guy is this drunk guy is clearly dancing around like being a bit of a rowdy like like smashed off his head. Yeah, but only and a Joe little Schilling. bit of an ass, isn't it? Only a little bit. Joe just Schilling, like any other like, guy on a Friday night. Yeah, Joe yeah, Schilling, yeah, yeah. like he doesn't even tap him; he just pushes him out of the way. Which then this guy like it like basically not squares up to Joe Schilling, but basically says to him, "Why did you do that?" And then Joe Schilling just smacks him in the face. Gives oh, him really? Left, right. yeah. oh, uh, Literally yeah. no, like... I, Joe Schilling apparently said he used, like, a racial slur or something. What which, uh, well, yeah, I, I I, don't know what he would have called him. Because, like... Mate, he, the, the he, way that Joe walked past him and bumped into him, he was desperate to fight that guy. Like, he yeah. bumped into him to, to provoke a response out of the guy. 100%. Yeah, I yeah, 100%. Yeah. Video. Yeah, that, yeah, that's not, that's, yeah, that's weird. Man, would have been, would have been completely <laughs> different if he had started on him with jujitsu, just gone for a <laughs> an arm bar or something like that. I can just he, imagine he, someone he, like he sat on the floor. <laughs> oh, it's wet down here. <laughs> like, I'm, no, yeah. I'm, 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 oh. I'm standing up again. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is like a, this is like a chip on the floor that you. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> this, again, this was actually really bad idea. I'm actually very embarrassed. <laughs> I'm gonna stand but, up. But, this is not great. But but yeah, but yeah, jujitsu people don't want to fight for that reason. No, <laughs> well, jujitsu doesn't work on the streets, man. That's a it's a shame. <laughs> oh, so many people say that. They do. They well, love well it. you say that, but I, I've been attacked by one of my own students once. As a joke. Really? What? Yeah. Oh, as yeah. a joke. Uh, yeah. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I thought you meant somebody jumped you, like, what they, they, you for, like they, for paying for your classes or something. They did literally run at me and jump on me while I was oh, walking geez. the street. <laughs> ex- ex- expecting me to react I was like I had, I had my headphones in I was walking down the pavement towards Acton or away from Acton uh, towards Chiswick and um, he just jumped on me I fell to the floor and then I was like I, I, I straight away I grabbed his leg I I, pull, I pulled him to the floor luckily the first, first instinct was to like, pull him to the floor I was about to punch him in the head <laughs> I was about to do my did so sorry I was about to pull guard and then <laughs> go <for> something <laughs> <laughs> I was about to punch him in the head, and then I was like, "Oh, you idiot!" <laughs> I knew who huh. it was. So I was like, oh, "You dickhead! Why'd you do that?" <laughs> he cut my whole arm up. I, Jesus! I landed on the floor oh, of my really? elbow. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, oh you're no, it's so annoying." Yeah. Does he dickhead. still train with us, or is he like? No, 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 no he's not alive anymore. <laughs> no, he's, he's okay. He doesn't train anymore. No. Oh, fair, he's, fair. He's gone somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Christ, Jesus, it's a bit unnecessary, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, but starting a fight. Uh, so last thing, yeah, I'm that's right. Yeah, yeah. Have I started any fights? No, I haven't started any fights. No. I bet uh, the way <laughs> it's like you were reminiscing about that moment. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those yeah, are the yeah, days, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I suddenly, like, I suddenly flashed back. Like, did I start any fights? No. Am I being drunk? Is that you know? No, I haven't done that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, I've only really experienced you, like, I mean, this is probably a sign of how per, perhaps I haven't gone out as much with uh, with you guys, because I've only really experienced you, like, quite drunk, maybe the once, no, maybe twice, actually, there was after grading, which in we class, had a few drinks. Oh, in yeah. Class, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in class. <laughs> the the time time blue in belt. Class. Steve gets a blue belt. Everyone gets a blue belt. <laughs> <laughs> That's when, that's when Ian gets a blue belt if I get drunk in class. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Ian. You're the best. It's, 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 like, 
You smell like pure vodka? No. <laughs> no, no, no. It's my, it's my, it's my aftershave. Yeah. You, you've done so well. <laughs> you copy your face. <laughs> no, there was the a time. There was the time I invited you guys round for. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I invited. This is. I don't think I told you this story, Dustin. It doesn't sound familiar. I've invited. <laughs> I invited a few people round to my house from Wave, right? And I said, oh, yeah, it's going to start. Drinks start at like eight, maybe like seven o'clock, right? And they were like, oh, yeah, cool, cool. So it comes seven, eight o'clock, and I think I drop, I think maybe it's Poppy a message, or or maybe it was somebody, maybe it was Poppy, but I dropped somebody a message to be like, oh, you guys come in. And nobody replied. And I knew it was after class on a Saturday. Oh, no. And I know that after class, they usually go for a couple of drinks. So I was like, oh, they probably ended up going somewhere. Okay, so I, I just f- we forgot about it. And we carried on. And this evening, basically, like to give the vibe of how things were in the house, we had like a nice cheese board that somebody had. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, and we, it was like it was quite civilized, I would say. And fucking ten o'clock, suddenly there's this like banging on my door, and I look out the window, and there's Lorenzo outside. And I think were you with um was it Mark or was it with Mark, Mark Rory? Yeah, Rory. Um, Ed, yeah, that's it, Ed and Poppy and. You yeah. were all fucking smashed, like, <laughs> completely drunk. And Lorenzo was like, "Yeah, we've come, we've come, we 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 made it, we made it." And I was like, <laughs> yeah, "I could tell." And you were like, "Yeah, we're definitely here, we're here." Like, and you all came in, and you're properly. And Lorenzo, the thing that sticks out in Simone's mind, she mentions this so many times when I was like, oh, "I'm going to training," and she was like, "Oh, it's Lorenzo teaching." I'll be like, "Yeah." And she'll always go, do you remember when he ate all the cheese from the cheese board? <laughs> <laughs> you single-handedly just ate every block of cheese. <laughs> like, not even try. You were just sat there eating every cheese while I was getting drunk. I mean, I had a good time, but <laughs> you just ate the whole cheese board. That's the only time I think I've seen you drunk, actually, to be honest. Simone was like, I want that cheese for the whole week. <laughs> she, she, I think that was the sad thing on her face when she saw you eating yeah. the cheese. Yeah. She was like looking at it. I was like, I was like, all right, Simone, <laughs> you do <a> cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she stopped coming to class because you ate all her cheese. Yeah, she's mm. like, I'm never coming to class again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then and then and then we all left apart from one person, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's two. Yeah, Rory and uh, Mark. Yeah, the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. hilarious. And uh, yeah, actually, I remember that then, really well. Because you got to see the R- Rory show after that. That was a Rory I did. show. Kicked in yeah. At that point. yeah, he was having really a good cool. time. He was having a good yeah, time. Yeah. He was so <laughs> he was he was he was, he was he was he was drank a lot. Basically, I'll say that he drank a lot. And you guys were slowly leaving. And I remember Ed. I was like saying to Ed, "Oh, could you could you help me like get Rory to go?" <laughs> and Ed looked down at you, and you just yeah. shook your head and walked <laughs> out. <laughs> you just—he's your you problem it's now. I was like, "It's too late. <laughs> we, can't, we, can't, we can't solve it." It's like, <laughs> yeah, and you just <laughs> off. Yeah, I was like, I've, I've been there before. I, I know how impossible. Just smashed oh, into man. your house, ate your cheese, <laughs> left you a fucking gremlin, and went away. <laughs> like, Brilliant! I'm out. I, I, I can't deal with this. after all, after all that cheese they fed me. I can't deal with it. <laughs> 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 it, it. Was my fault? It was the cheese that they fed me. The was, cheese. Was... <laughs> oh god! Uh, Luckily, Mark didn't leave. Mark got Rory to leave. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> mate, uh, he felt terrible the next day, though. I'll tell you that. He was like so apologetic, which I was like, he wasn't even that bad. He was just very Who drunk. Who was? Mark Rory. Or Rory. Oh, Rory. Rory. Oh, Rory. Rory. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> he wasn't that bad. He wasn't that bad. He wasn't that bad. I know he was. Um, <laughs> there was a particular bit which like a friend of mine from Ireland was leaving and then Rory was like why didn't you tell me you were Irish and he got like really he got really angry with him and (laughs) bless my friend he was like I didn't actually get a chance to talk to you because you were like drunk (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, which was funny. But uh, yeah, no, it was a good night, barring it was well, it was a good night up until 10 o'clock when you guys arrived. <laughs> <laughs> when we arrived. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, you just know as well, Ian, that they were all at the pub, like rubbing their brows, like, oh, we got to go to Ian's fucking thing. <laughs> 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 Could totally forgot about that fuck. So. <laughs> it it, it was like a scene out of Bottom. I, I, it was like Bottom, something from Bottom. Remember the TV show Bottom? No, so that, with Rick I don't Mayo. think I've seen oh, that. No. Oh, it's it Rick Mayo? <laughs> it's Rick Mayo, yeah. yeah. Rick oh, Mayo, anyway. That is so yeah, funny. Cool. Yeah, no, you're yeah, right, so Dustin. Cool. I do imagine. If only, if only whoever it was who suggested, oh, we could just like not go. If only everybody listened to that person, because there was somebody there who probably went, ah, it's too late now. And then somebody went, no, we can do it. We can make it. And then everybody went, yeah, we can do it. It was probably Rory saying we shouldn't go. (laughs) And and I'd say it was Ed saying we should go. And I was like, yeah, let's just go. (laughs) Yeah, let's just go. Let's just go. And then, God, that came back to bite us, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, Ian's like never inviting them again. Oh, mate, <laughs> I've had house. plenty of house parties since then. I'm just... <laughs> oh, you asshole! You asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, to be fair, I, that that pandemic came in quite quick when we moved into here. Like we moved into our new place, did a housewarming, and then pandemic hit, and then nobody's allowed to come around anybody's houses anymore. So, no, you've uh, you got to come once and eat my cheese board, and that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of that. Yeah, <laughs> we're never doing that again. But no, it's uh, I, I I keep meaning to come join for more uh, like drinks out, I guess, as it were. But we haven't been able to, have we? It's been uh, been quite uh, difficult to do that. Mm. Oh, Lorenzo. Oh, that's my gone. take on that. Lorenzo's oh, is he gone? gone. <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> gone. I didn't even notice. <laughs> he just fucked up. <laughs> Well, I embarrassed, I embarrassed him with the cheese story. <laughs> that's the end of the show. <laughs> I, <laughs> he left out of embarrassment because he ate my cheese board. So. I mean, it's probably more realistic that his battery died or something. But he's le- he has legit gone. Well, it was a pleasure. Ha- we'll try and edit it in. It was a pleasure having him. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll leave it. We'll leave it as is. Yeah, no, we will. Well, it was a pleasure having him on the podcast. <laughs> it and, was. Uh, I guess we'll have to ring him and tell him that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. All right, Ian, that was fun, mate. We'll, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, we'll see you next will week. You, will you still have his recording? <laughs> I fucking hope so. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hope so. This, otherwise, this is going to be a difficult one to edit. <laughs> <laughs> trying to edit out all of his parts of the conversation and make it still make sense <laughs> right <laughs> okay there's only one way to find out <laughs> we just finished the recording and I'll see if it's still there <laughs> right fingers crossed everyone bye <laughs>